In this video, I'm going to be talking about series circuits versus parallel circuits. What are they and how are they different? A series circuit is an electrical circuit that's wired up. So there's only a single path for the electrons to travel through. And a parallel circuit is an electrical circuit where there's multiple paths or loops for the electrons to travel through that look something like this. Now, if you take a look at each of my circuit drawings, I drew a schematic diagram of a series circuit and a parallel circuit. For our series circuit, we have our battery over here where the electrons leave and they complete this loop and they only have one path and one loop to travel through as opposed to the parallel circuit where there's multiple branches and there's multiple loops for the electrons to travel through. So they can leave the power source and then go through first loop they can go around and go through the second one or they can loop around and go through the third one so any circuit where there are multiple paths for the electrons to travel through would be considered a parallel circuit now let's take a look at the three main components of each of the circuits which is the current voltage and resistance and there's some very distinct differences between these rules so let's take a look at the current first. So let's take a look at our rule for current for a series circuit to start off with. So IT, which is our total current, is equivalent to the current that wrote that goes through resistor number one, which is equal to the current that goes to resistor number two and resistor number three and so on. So basically the current is the same everywhere in a series circuit because there's that single loop and that single pathway, the rate of flow for the electrons is gonna be the same anywhere in the circuit as opposed to a parallel circuit, because the electrons break off into different branches or have multiple pathways, the flow of electricity um, breaks up depending on how much resistance is in each of these different branches. So as you can see here, all the different colors are overlapping. So we have the total amount of current leaving the battery. And then from here, they split up into branch number one, branch number two, and branch number three, based on how much resistance is in each of the resistors. And then they all come back and then merge back together over here and then combine for that total current once again. So the total current is the sum of each of the individual currents through each of these three branches for a parallel circuit. Now let's take a look at the rule for voltages for a series and parallel circuit. So for our series circuit, our rule is the total voltage drop is equivalent to the sum of each of the individual voltage drops through each of the different resistors. So a lot of times the voltage could be drawn as a, or written as a delta V or just a regular V. Um, delta V is just showing that it's a voltage drop through each of the resistors. So the total amount of voltage drop 
is basically the rating that the battery or power source gets. So if the electrons leave with 20 volts of energy, then they're going to use a portion of that 20 through each of the resistors as it passes through the entire circuit. So the each of the individual voltage drops are definitely going to be less than the total, but must sum up to that total delta V rating. As opposed to a parallel circuit where the total voltage drop is the same for resistor one, resistor two, and resistor three. And the reason for that is that each of the electrons only pass through a single branch. So they drop their total voltage through the resistor that they choose to travel through. As opposed to the series again, that has to pass through three different resistors. So it only uses a portion of its voltage as it passes through each of them. Now for our final rule, let's take a look at the resistance. For our resistance, the total resistance of the entire circuit is just simply the sum of each of the individual resistors. And again, because there's a single path or a single loop for the electrons to travel through, as they travel through, they have to pass through each of the resistors. So in total, if you just sum them up, that's the total amount of resistance that each of the electrons experiences. For the parallel circuit, it's definitely significantly different to where it's the inverse of each of them. And if you add up more and more resistors, the resistance, um, the total resistance of the circuit actually decreases. Now, the reason for that is if you add an additional branch to our circuit, now you've opened up an additional pathway. And the more pathways there are, that creates less resistance overall. Okay, for example, if you were driving along a street that has one lane that opens up to three lanes, and then you added a fourth lane. When you add the fourth lane, there's going to be less resistance or less traffic because there's multiple pathways. There's more pathways and more space to travel through. So same thing for the electrons. The electrons are passing through. And if you add an additional resistor and additional pathway, that actually creates less resistance overall. So this one has an inverse rule. The more resistors there are, the less overall resistance we have as opposed to the series circuit, where if you keep on adding additional resistors, the electrons have to pass through more and more resistors and therefore would contribute to making a greater total resistance. So I hope these, this side-by-side uh, -side comparison was helpful in helping you understand the concepts of current voltage and resistance relating to a series and parallel circuit. Thank you for watching and listening.